Hi folks. Now this is a field that I came to yesterday with Holly. I was here for about four hours. Didn't find an awful lot to be fair. Uh, not many signals for a big field like this. It's up on the hilltops again. Um, I made a few finds and I'll show you those now actually because uh, so far I've had nothing today. Uh, I popped out after work again. Uh, the rain showers are passing over the over the tops of the hills. So yeah, I'll show you these finds anyway, and we'll um, we'll start with some detecting and see if we can actually find anything apart from big iron and big bits of lead as well. So this is from yesterday. So we had an odd little thing there. It's been suggested it's probably off a horse harness, 19th century, so sort of 1800s. Um, a little copper button there, a 1962 uh, Queen Elizabeth II sixpence. Quite a nice little watch winder there. Possibly 1800s. Uh, that's different to the ones I found before, which is nice. Uh, quite a good, where, where are we? George the Third, I think it's a half penny. There's some quite good detail on that. Quite a good bust on it. There is a date, or most of the date. Oops. And I think it's well. I think it's 1777. It's certainly 1770 something. And I think it's a seven at the end. You might be able to see through the video. But for a copper coin, that's uh, that's not bad. That one. And. Right towards the end of the video, uh, sorry, the video, the hunt from yesterday, we had this little virtually blank shilling. Um, so it could be William III, could be one of the Georges, I suppose. Who knows? I think there are some signs of lettering on it somewhere, um, but I'll have to refer to my book and see if I can actually match anything. But it's fairly blank, so I'm not, I'm not too hopeful with that. So that was from yesterday, these finds here. Anyway, we'll see what we can find today. I think the rain stopped for now. So we'll have a go, we'll crack on. Well, that, uh, that last clip you just saw before this one, that was taken a few days ago. Uh, I spent another two and a half hours in that field uh, and got nothing but a single button and some bits of rubbish. So I called back again for another five hours in that field and one or two others and found two buttons and that was that was pretty much it really so it's a bit of a bit, a bit of a disaster really anyway we're back in this ridge and furrow field um i've had a handle off a razor and i've just had a 14 signal down here i actually thought it might have been a shotgun cap but uh, i'm pleased to say it's not we've got a, a little buckle so it's probably going to be from the 1700s, 1720 to 1790. It's a very, it's a very thin, flimsy one. Not too bad, is it really? It's very, very lightweight. Good, I'm happy with that, folks. That'll carry on. I'll try and grid this region furrow as best as I can. Well, we've got a coin. Uh, looks like a very, a very slick worn coin as well, unfortunately. And I think it might be a George II. I can just see a bus facing to the left. 1920 signal, that one. I think it's another half penny. Yeah, that was about, uh, about six inches deep. You can see anything really on that but it's very worn but it should be able to get the bus to show later on hopefully good up little coin this is quite a nice little find I'm quite pleased with that 14 15 signal at the top end of this um, this little bit of rigid furrow here fairly deep actually as well yeah, it's eight inches deep, that. And if, it's another buckle, actually, but it's, uh, this is a, a different one. I've had one of these before. This is a, 
a sword belt hanger bu uh, buckle. It's got a loop on the bottom of it and they would have suspended a, a sword belt from that, or a sword. There we are. A bit bent, but that's a lovely little find. Now the ridge and furrow, I presume is post-medieval. Most of the finds have been post-medieval, so I guess this is going to be from the 1700s as well. Yeah, really pleased with that. <laughs> oh, I've been dodging rain showers. Uh, I've got a course in my bag. It's not a particularly good one, but it's just a lightweight one that fits in. Uh, it's beautiful scenery around here, folks. Really nice up on the hills again in North Yorkshire. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's stunning. There's a lot of fields haven't been harvested yet. I presume that's probably barley. Uh, I think quite a bit of the wheat's been done. But yeah, um, a few minutes ago I had a, I had a little find. It's another coin. It's another Georgian, uh, George III half penny. Looks a bit like Homer Simpson actually on this one. Uh, the edge is quite corroded, but there's, uh, the detail on the bust isn't, isn't too bad actually, it's all right. I had a bit of a disaster when I arrived here because the I opened my bag to film the first clip and I found that the camera, the uh, sorry, the tripod had broken, the neck had broken on it. So at the moment I've got it bodged with a bit of uh, a bit of wire that I found off a, f off a fence. That's that tripod there. Yeah, that's uh, detail is not too bad on that really, is it? That was a, an 18 signal, quite a nice sounding signal. I have dug up a few shotgun caps since I've been here. Some of them reading up to 20, so although they sound a bit duller than coins, you've got to dig them anyway. Um, some of them are reading 1314, and 1314 is a similar signal to those two buckles that I found as well. So yeah, they've all got to be dug. We've got a 15 up to 17 signal there. I can see what it is, I've already dug the, ho dug the hole. Fifteen, sixteen that way. Quite deep. The numbers jump all over the place if I turn slightly. Must be about a good nine inches deep. We've got a nice little spindle wall there. Quite a small one, but it's quite roughly made as well. So I'm down at the flatter end of the field now. I've, I've given up on the gridding, I've got a bit bored. Uh, so I cut across to this far end of the field. There's no region furrow here, it's quite flat. Quite well, quite a lot of thistles as well. And behind where you are there is a field that I quickly visited a few days ago, but I've been in the field for about five minutes and then the tractor turned up and started spraying some of this uh, nitrogen fertiliser, great big plumes of fertiliser all over the place, so I cleared out of there, went up in, the, in that direction, but I had, a, I had a bad day that day. But this is a lovely little find, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, um, I do like finding spindle walls and like I said, it might have some age to this. Twenty-one, twenty-two-ish signal here. This is quite a deep one, actually. Uh, well, it must be a good nine or ten inches deep, I think. And it's another lead item. I don't know what it is. Uh, like a fairly thick, flat disc. Could be a personal weight of some kind. Sort of chamfered. I suppose it could be a, I don't know, a bottle stopper or something, or... I'm guessing, really. Initially I thought there might have been a pattern there, but I can't make anything out if there is. Really not sure. Sometimes you look back in the video and you can see something, but... Uh, 
I certainly can't at the moment. Fairly crudely made. Mm. So it could be a weight of some sort. Could be a lid off something. I don't know. It was actually just in the sidewall, just, just down there. Hi ladies and gents, thanks for joining me for the roundup. If you've stuck it uh, out this far, well done. <laughs> right, so a fair few bits of junk there. Stair rod holder, rivet type thing, bit of copper something or other. Not quite sure what that is, maybe a sort of a strap or something. Bullets, bit of odd lead something or other. Uh, pretty sure that's a handle from a razor. Gotta be, hasn't it? Uh, plenty of buttons. Um, actually, I found this lead item here. I didn't film this. Uh, I thought perhaps it could be a top off a bottle or something or other, but it's obviously been squished. Um, I did wonder if it could have been a powder, a powder measure, but I don't think it is. Um, possibly a top off something. Um, now, is it in my imagination? Is it the way it's been squashed? But is, is that? A heart shape in the top. Might just be my imagination. Um, yeah, so if you recognise that or have a clue, please post a comment below. Um, comments are always appreciated. Um, I think that was possibly a button or a cufflink type thing. It's quite sharp on the edges, it's sort of serrated. Um, musket ball there this thing it was gold gilded originally on both sides I think as well actually it was a bit odd and someone actually it was uh, someone on Twitter one of the floors thought it was probably off a, a horse harness it could have had a lettering in in there so there may have been a series of these attached to a bridle or something or other possibly with the owner's name or the horse's name or the name of the farm. So he thinks uh, 1800s that one. Some sort of hook type thing could be a, I don't know, I guess it could be off a coat hook or something, I'm not sure. That was in one of the fields where the tractor appeared and started spraying fertiliser everywhere. So one of them, whatever that is, um, that was a Another lead item, possibly a top off something. Um, this weight, I don't know why, I'll just call it a lead weight, um, found not far from the spindle wall. Uh, I weighed this and it weighs 2.25 ounces. Nothing on the bottom. I don't know if that's meant to be some sort of decoration on the top, I can't, I can't quite figure it out. It possibly, possibly is. But like lead items, they're very difficult to date, aren't they? I know the floors don't like to date these, uh, but it's, I'll probably say post medieval, uh, but it might be a bit older, I'm, I'm really not sure. The, now the spindle wall, uh, found at the flat end of the field. I've had a look on the portable antiquities site, I've looked at lots of spindle walls, and the nearest one I've found. It's a record for a spindle wall from uh, Anglo-Saxon, early medieval times, AD 700 to 850. And the size of this, the weight of it, the, the size of the hole, is all extremely close to this medieval spindle wall. So, Anglo-Saxon, early medieval. So, I'm going to go with that, I think. Um, I guess with lead items, a lot, of, a lot of people will say you can't really date them, but going by the size and weight, and knowledge of somebody else, I'm going to go along with that. So I'm very happy with that find. I said before, I do enjoy finding these. That's great. Couple of buckles there. That one, I presume is post, oops, sorry for the focusing. I presume it's post medieval. It's, it's actually more corroded than I realized. Uh, yeah, it's a bit fragile that one. And also this one too, the, um, the sword hanger buckle. But this is actually older than I thought. Um, it's early post-medieval, so you're looking at, oops, the date for this is 1500 to 1630, so that's uh, 
That's not bad really, is it, for something that's four or five hundred years old. Again, it's in a poor state, but you get what you get with this hobby. Um, a nice little watch winder there, possibly 1800s. Haven't had one quite like that before. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, a 1962 uh, Elizabeth II sixpence in dire need of a clean, but we'll see. I might get around to it one day. This, I think, is a George II half penny. You can just make out the bust if you get the light right. Facing to the left, nothing on the reverse. This one, now this was that coin that came out looking really nice and green. <clears throat> Well, unfortunately, as long as I started to clean it, I haven't put any water near any of these. It was like it was like the skin on top popped, and underneath it was just all bronze rot. It was all dust and powder uh, on both sides. Anyway, it's a George the Third half penny, and I think it's one of these Hibernian ones. Just make out the shape on the back there with the crown at the top and a harp. So is an Irish half penny. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is another George III, I think it's George III, half penny. Poor old state again. This one, um, this is a cracking little find that. I had to go over the bottom part with one of those um, cleaning pencils. And that's a George III, half penny again, but it's got some lovely detail on that. And the back's not bad either. It's, I think it's 1777. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that one. Lovely. And the silver from the very first part of the video. Now, to be fair, I didn't be doing anything. I'd almost given up the will to detect because it was, I found nothing but rubbish, but that's a William III shilling. So late 1690s, nothing on the reverse. I don't think it's just about all gone. I think just see me, just see some lettering on the back. Uh, a bit bent. That's possibly what saved the front from being totally obliterated. There he is, we're in the third. So there we go, folks. Those are the finds from uh, around about 15 hours detecting. Uh, quite a lot of rubbish. So, yeah, it wasn't the best of hunts, but it is what it is. Right, so thanks very much, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and we'll catch you next time around. So in the meantime, if you're detecting, have fun and good luck. Bye for now.